Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I'm getting ready here to head to the Thousand Islands in upstate New York to do a little smallmouth fishing in the last BPT event of the year. Cannot wait to get there. I've got all my rods ready to roll. And one thing that I noticed that I think a lot of people don't normally recognize is how there are a bunch of other baits that are really good for smallmouth. Generally speaking, every time you think about fishing for smallmouth, you think about drop shots, you think about Ned rigs, uh, small swim baits, your finesse presentations, a hair jig, a Demiki rig, something along those lines. But I'm here to tell you guys that those are definitely not the only baits, and there are a lot of really good lures that catch smallmouth that go very, very underutilized. So we're going to talk about those today. Before I do get into that, I want to remind you, if you're looking for additional con content from me, check out my members only page. Uh, you can go to the my home YouTube homepage, click the join button, find out everything you need to see there. Also, if you want to support the channel in another manner and you're looking to purchase some tackle from Tackle Warehouse, please use my Tackle Warehouse affiliate link, which will be in the video description. Uh, you can click on that link and bookmark it for future orders as well, and it's very, very much appreciated. All right, so let's talk a little bit about some of these smallmouth lures that, in my opinion, go very underutilized. The first one is a bigger walking topwater bait. This is the Berkeley Driftwalker 100. Generally speaking, a topwater bait can be one of your best friends when it comes to looking for some big smallmouth bass. If you're fishing an area where you've got fish that are in less than 14 feet of water, you'd be amazed at how many smallmouth will come up and hit a walking topwater bait. They absolutely love them. It makes them very uh, agitated and aggressive. And a lot of times, you know, because they are bigger baits, they may hit it one, two, three, four times before they actually connect with it, or they'll come up and tail slap it and you'll see your whole bait go flying through the air. But the reality is a topwater walking bait is a phenomenal choice anytime you're fishing for smallmouth. And a lot of times it goes very, very underutilized. Another one is a crankbait. Crankbaits are great baits to, be, uh, to get some of those smallmouth to really react to it. But I got to tell you, generally speaking, it's not a matter of banging the soft cover like you would traditionally fish a crankbait. It's much more about your speed cranking, where you're cranking a bait that will get close to the bottom, you're cranking it fast, you're giving it some stops, you're giving it some rips, you're going to generate a lot of strikes. It's a very, very good tactic when you're fishing places like a Lake St. Clair, uh, where you don't really have a whole lot of grass to interfere. You're just getting this bait down there, you're cranking it fast, and you're really just trying to get those fish to react. Uh, for me, a lot of your Crankbaits that are, are able to be retrieved at really fast rates and run true are what you're looking for. Uh, this is a dredger. This is the 14.5. The Berkeley Dime is a very good one. The uh, Rapala DT series is a really good one. Um, you know, even like the, the uh, Strike King 10XD are really good crankbaits. So you're really just looking for one that you can burn but you need to keep it up off the bottom. You gotta keep it above the fish. If you can do that, you'll find that crankbaits have been great. I've had uh, some really good days doing that technique in places even like Lake Mead out in the Arizona, Nevada border. Another one that's a killer is a, is a vibrating jig. Uh, this is the Berkeley Slobber Knocker, your chatterbaits. Uh, if you wanna go with a little bit smaller version like the Z-Man Mini Max, that's another really good one. The whole key here is smallmouth love a vibrating jig every bit as much as largemouth do. Uh, it's just one of those baits, again, you don't necessarily need to make cover with it. You're just burning this thing across the surface or slightly under the surface, and those smallmouth will come up and react to it. Now, if you happen to have an area that does have some good grass clumps, you can fish them just like you would for largemouth, but the smallmouth will be hanging around those clumps as well. So from that standpoint, don't sleep on your vibrating jigs. Just another really, really good bait anytime you're looking to catch them. Another bait that I think goes often overlooked are your fluke style baits. This is just a zoom uh, super fluke. Great baits for triggering smallmouth to come up and look at it. I generally like to throw colors that are a little bit more bright and aggressive. So your chartreuses, 
your pearl whites, things that are not necessarily as clear as this one. This is the disco green color. It's a good color, but I actually prefer the bright colors and, and I'll fish them faster. I'm not necessarily just twitching it, getting that fluke to glide all over the place. I'm actually really trying to retrieve them much more aggressive and fish them almost in a manner like you would on some of your blueback herring lakes down south. You know, you're really ripping the fluke fast, but I often feel like a fluke goes very under underfished anytime you're talking about fishing for smallmouth. It's a phenomenal bait, gets a ton of bites. It also works really well on your Carolina rigs too. So if you happen to have some deep rock flats or deep uh, rock uh, edges, things like that, or like where I'm going on Thousand Islands where we're going to be fishing a lot of, uh, or drifting a lot of edges and different little humps, things like that, the flute can be a really good choice and it generates a lot of good bites. And then the last one is one that, you know, for a while had a ton of exposure and has really kind of gone away. And that's your bigger spinner baits, three quarter ounce spinner baits. Uh, generally speaking, anything that's in your chartreuse and white and don't sleep on chartreuse and white bladed versions as well. This is a Picasso, just a really good bait for getting some of those smallmouth to come up and aggressively strike your rod. I will say when you're on a good spinner bait bite for your smallmouth, you you definitely want to be holding on because they, they will hit it like a ton of bricks and at the same time it's not unusual to go through multiple spinner baits in a day so if you're heading to a place that has a good smallmouth population and you get some of that uh, overcast conditions a little bit of wind a spinner bait can be one of the best baits to throw but you're going to need two or three of them because they will break those things into pieces uh, spinner baits are a great bait but when you're talking about smallmouth and I don't care what spinner bait you're throwing, they wreak havoc on them. But these are some baits that I'll have rigged up for my next event. These are some smallmouth baits that a lot of people don't use, but they very much should be in my opinion. So let me know in the comment section, what are some of your other underutilized smallmouth baits that you don't think a lot of people are using? Uh, I'd love to hear from you and I'm sure others would as well. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate all the support. Stay tuned. We'll have a new video coming out tomorrow.